Hey, Daniel, uh, thanks for coming in to do this. Um, when uh, when you go home at the end of the season, what are you going to look back on as, as what's going to be the standout thing to you about how this season went? Uh, I mean, it'll be a lot. It'll just be, um, it'll be pretty, pretty nice to decompress and, you know, see the family and just kind of enjoy them for a few days. Um, you know, there'll be a lot of th different things that I look back on and um, whether or not they're good or bad, you know, about 2020, the season and everything that went down, um, you know, it's, there's a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, good and bad, you just kind of reflect on the good stuff and try to learn from, from all the bad stuff that, that, that happened or you did or whatnot and, and go from there and try to get better. For all of us that have watched this from afar, we have a sense of what it's been like to go through it. Do you think anyone who hasn't been through uh, the way you guys have had to play this season that will ever like truly understand what was involved in, in completing this season, the way that you guys did it? Probably not. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we, we were playing a baseball game, you know? Um, yeah. Our routines probably were a lot different. It looked a lot different than in years past, but at the end of the day, it's, it's going out every night and being able to play baseball and, you know, give, give people, you know, two and a half, three hours to, to watch a baseball game, you know, um, that's the name of the game. And, you know, we're, we're lucky to be able to do it and we were able to figure it out this year. And, and like I said, it wasn't exactly how it always looks, but, um, you know, here we are and at the end of the year and we got through it. Howard Fenderich, Associated Press. Hey, uh, sort of following up on that, what for you personally was the most difficult adjustment about 2020 on and or off the field? Well, obviously it was, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, following protocol and making sure, you know, I, you know, I can't tell you how many times I would get up from my locker and forget my mask in my locker and have to turn around and go get it, that type, that type of stuff. And, um, you know, it seems kind of trivial and um, to complain about that but just the kind of small stuff like that that you know you're not used to doing and obviously spit testing every other day and um, you know riding six different buses instead of just two you know for coaches and staff and players and uh, making sure you're on the right bus and you know sitting in assigned seats on airplanes and you know it's it, everything was just about this season was different and um, you know like I said we're at the end of the day, we were, we were lucky to, to get through um, the season and hopefully we can kind of just push through it and not have to look back on 2020 much longer. <laughs> and for, from a team perspective, well, what do you think had the most negative effect on, on how things went on the field for, for you guys this year? Uh, I mean, on the field, obviously, is the I would say there's – the injuries we we dealt with a lot of injuries this year and not that we were the only team that went through that but you know pretty significant injuries went down i don't know if you can completely blame it on you know, a short ramp up period or or whatever but um you know whether or not those types of things were going to happen throughout the course of a regular 162 game season there probably will we're going to but um it's hard not to think that with a, a normal season and normal spring training that you know guys probably might have been able to stay relatively a little bit more healthy um uh, and then obviously you know there was you know some stuff you know like with uh you know all, all the different protocols and, and the bus and trying to not you know st stay around each other all the time and 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 there was it just didn't feel like there was we were able to kind of build that same camaraderie and chemistry you know that was so evident and so important to us last year just because of you know trying to follow protocols like you never you know, a lot of, you know, we weren't able to go, you know, grab dinner when we got to a, a, a road play, a road city uh, early or something like that. It's just a lot of little things like that that can, you know, really add to your clubhouse chemistry that we weren't able to do. Thank you. Todd Divis, NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Daniel. Uh, how is your body and arm at this point? Uh, I mean, knock on wood, it still feels pretty good. Um, you know, what uh, being able to, to, you know, be available every night is kind of something I pride myself on. So, um, you know, I uh, was able to do that this year. And, um, you know, body-wise, I feel pretty strong. And, 
and healthy. Like I said, knock on wood, we still got a couple games left, but uh, you know, I can just kind of take that um, as a positive moving into the off season and, and uh, you know, try to get better. You know, I've kind of told myself that, you know, I don't, I don't have a, a bulk of innings this year. I don't, I might not be able to have to take as much time off this year. I can kind of go straight into my off season routine and, um, you know, hopefully go from there and, and get a little bit better. Um, and this is kind of a separate general question. When you think about who should be MVP in a league, National League or American League, obviously you played in both. Um, like, who who should it be? Not name wise, but like, wh- who is that person? What what are those? What does that acronym mean to you? MVP. Everybody defines it kind of differently. Well, I mean, it's obviously it's most valuable player. So whoever brings the most value to the to their team in that year um, should typically win in a in a normal season. Um, you know, there's many guys who are deserving. You know, a couple on our team that are probably pretty deserving. You know, you take uh, one or two in our our lineup out of the game, out of the out of our lineup, and we're a completely different team. You know, so um, you know, I, I I feel like it encompasses everything that has to do with the game. You know, defense, base running, offense, obviously, and, and doing the little things to to help the team win. Whoever does that the best throughout the course of the year is usually the MVP or should be at the end of the season. Do you think a team's record has anything to do with whether an individual should be MVP? Uh. I mean, at the end of the day, no, I don't think so personally. Um, but I know there's a lot of people that do agree that, that you know, an MVP should come from a playoff team. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, if the guy was the best player in the league or um, and he was on a losing team, I mean, just for me, think about how much worse that team would have been if he wasn't on that team, you know. So um, for me, if he was the best player in the league and he's on a team that goes 500 doesn't make the playoffs or a team that finishes in last place if he's the best player in the league then that's it thank you <clears throat> jessica camarado mb.com hey daniel uh i was wondering what you thought this season of both kyle finnegan and tanner rainey pitching with you out of the bullpen yeah it was uh impressive to watch you know um you know obviously we saw glimpses of what um tanner could do last year um you know, especially down the stretch and in the playoffs, he was a big piece for us going on down the stretch last year. He pitched in big innings, um, you know, and, and, and Kyle being a, you know, relatively, you know, unknown, especially to this organization, um, you know, coming into spring training, didn't really know a whole lot about him, but, um, you know, I really got to know him pretty well down there in the bullpen this year and, you know, off the field, he's a great guy. And, um, you know, what he, what he was able to do in his first taste in the big leagues was, was very impressive as well. So, um, I would say, you know, the sky's the limit for both those guys, you know, pitching in the back end of the bullpen with their stuff and, you know, their makeup and, you know, who they are as, as the ball players, teammates and, and people, you know, it's going to be fun to watch for, for years to come. Uh, going back also to the different, the differentness of everything, <laughs> I'm just bored of this year. Uh, when you guys were on the road, you had a lot more downtime just mm-hmm. being spent in your hotels, things like that. What were some of the new ways that you found to pass time that you didn't have to do before? Um, you know, I, for me, I, it wasn't a ton different. Um, you know, obviously you can only do so much in a hotel room, but you know, it's just watching new things on Netflix. Um, you know, I tried to, not to, you know, watch too much video, um, you know, of yourself and try to get too overly analytical of yourself. and. Um, you know, especially when things aren't, aren't going your way, kind of getting your own way doing it, doing that, you know, but uh, I noticed a lot more guys carrying those uh, portable gaming systems around a lot more this year. You know, they're bringing those on the plane. There's probably, you know, 10 to 12 guys with those little things this year. I was myself included. I had to dust mine off. I hadn't had it in a couple of years. You know, having three kids, you don't really get to play video games too much anymore. So having those, uh, I know having those this year definitely helped guys pass the time for sure. Alex Chappell, Masson TV. Hey, Daniel, you said that you'll go right into your off-season routine pretty much. What does that look like for you? What does that entail? You know, it's just uh, last year I had, uh, you know, a bit of a knee issue going into the off-season. So I didn't really get to, uh, you know, I didn't start my off-season program for till a little bit later just because I was trying to rehab my knee a little bit and, you know, kind of the unknown of free agency as well. I didn't want to bother it too much. So, um, you know, kind of knowing I'm, I'm going to be here next year, I can kind of just go right into a normal off season, whether that's uh, 
I'll kind of see how my arm feels in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll start throwing a little bit earlier this year than I did last year, just because of, you know, the extra work in October last year, um, kind of put a, put a toll on my arm and my body. So I wanted to make sure I was, I was fresh before I started throwing last year. So um, I think this year I might start a little bit earlier and, um, you know, obviously, like I said, I don't have 60 to 70 games of, uh, of use on my arm this year. So I can maybe try to, work out some mechanical issues a little bit earlier and try to try to get better for spring training. And uh, when you think about that, the 2021 bullpen group that you guys will have, what are you most looking forward to about when you think about the future? I just hope it's, you know, somewhat normal, you know, um, we can, we can get past this whole thing this year and, and get into everything, you know, off the field kind of calm down, especially with COVID and everything. And, we can just have a normal, normal off season and a normal roll into spring training and, and get through a normal spring training and, and we'll go through 2021 as it comes, you know, um, you know I'm looking forward to, to getting home and, and uh, decompressing a little bit and then getting back into my routine. All right. And two more, we'll go to Jesse Doherty, Washington post. Yeah. I'll let you do this, man. Um, you're one of the guys early on who kind of talked about how like whoever wins the world series this year, it's going to be odd to like how to weigh that in history. I don't know. It's like an asterisk thing, but whatever it is. Right. Can the same be said for a bad year for a team? I'm not asking for excuses, but like, do you guys kind of think of it as, I don't know, like in an asterisk type way, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are guys that think about it that way, but in the end, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't play very well this year. I think it was very pretty, pretty evident. Um, we didn't, you know, reach our goals. I mean, even though it's only 60 games, all of us wanted to win. You know, we're all competitors. We wanted to win. We wanted to get in the playoffs. We wanted to try to, you know, defend the World Series, and we just didn't do that. We didn't play well. Um, you know, you'd have to ask everybody else, but um, you know, I'm not. I'm not putting too much weight into a 60 game sample size. Um, I know this team's better than what we played this year. I think if we would we would have gotten 162 games, or you know, obviously more than 60 games, we would have been able to to show that. Um, but like I said, I'm not I'm not going to lose sleep this offseason over 60 game sample size. And I'm sure a lot of guys in the in that locker room aren't either. And then we we also asked you guys back in July about like not having the normal celebrations of a World Series. And, and at that point, it was more preemptive. We were asking kind of like how disappointed you were. But now that you've gone through these two months and, and you didn't get that, um, how much do you guys think about maybe not getting the reception and getting shared with fans? Like did that did that come up at all in your head as this season played out? Yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously. I mean, it's uh, it's disappointing. We want to, you know. It, I mean, it's just, it was just a bizarre year. And, you know, to go out there and play a game in front of no fans every single night is, it was, it was just very strange. Um, something that obviously none of us had ever done before. Um, but, you know, I, I know if I know anything, I know the fans in DC, um, you know, next season on opening day, they'll, they'll show up and, you know, they'll, we'll hopefully be able to do a little bit of something, even though it was two years ago, it'll be a two years ago then by now, you know, or by then, um, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where you just, you know, I know, that, like I said, the the fans in DC will show out and 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 they'll be loud on opening day, twenty twenty one for sure. Thanks, man. Appreciate. It. Yeah. And final questions, Dan Coco, uh, Mass and TV. Hey, Hadi, how you doing? Good, man. Um, at, coming out of summer camp, you talked about how you didn't really have a good feel for your slider at that point, and obviously, mm -hmm. you didn't it was kind of a moving target for when this season was really going to start. You didn't have a normal buildup. You didn't, nothing was normal about that. Right. Is there any point during the course of these last couple months where you really felt like yourself, where you had everything like you would, you know, when you were going well in a past year, or were you constantly searching for that, that normal Daniel Hudson throughout this season? You know, surprisingly, even though, you know, the numbers and a few games there don't really show it, um, you know, about probably, I would say, you know, after a few games, I got a few games under my belt. I honestly feel like I was taking better stuff out there than I had at any point last year, especially recently. I know, like I said, the um, you know I had a few bad games and a few blow up games, um, blew a few saves, but um, you know it was really just one pitch here or there. And I feel like I was taking better stuff out there this year than I did at any point last year, honestly. And that's that's the truth. And uh, you know, just like I said, the results weren't there, um, but the result, results haven't been there for a lot of people this year. It's just like you said, it's been an odd year and. Um, you know, it is what it is, a small sample size. And like I said, I'm not going to lose sleep over a small sample size of 60 games, 20 games for me. You know, it's, you know, I'm not, 
gonna lose sleep over it. Like I said, I'm gonna go home and no, I went out there with my best stuff. And even though the results don't say that I had a very good year, I know that I can take some very, really positive stuff into the off season and, and, and learn from it and grow from it and hopefully be better in 2021.